hello, no need Keiko, and to existence. Welcome! Good evening. You ready for another visual novel? y'all doing? <laughs> Today's tea is um, some kind of chamomile apple spice blend. Eepies. Oh no. Well today we have a fresh new demo. This game came out literally yesterday. This is uh, Threads of You, Beyond the Bay, by Lavender Studios. So we're gonna give it a quick playthrough. I'm not sure how long the demo should last. Um, no last time that I played a visual novel demo, I did a little bit of drawing in the end, but today I just want to get through the demo and then after that um, I'm gonna send everybody to a friend who's streaming at around 9 o'clock, I think. So let's not waste too much time here. We're gonna just jump right into it. It's our beach episode today. We've had our fun the past two weeks uh, trying to charm demon and monster girls. So now we're here to date uh, human men. <laughs> Let's get started. <gasps> also, can I make note? This tiny little cursor, it's so cute. This little popsicle. My name is... Uh... Oh, can I just enter? <gasps> oh my, God. my name is Calico. Enter. Oh! Can't forget my pronouns. It's, it's me! We're gonna make me. Good. We have some moles and freckle choices here. Some scars, eyebrows. Oh, this is very customizable. They already got the mouth down, Pat. Look at that wee mouth, cat mouth. Mm. Yeah, my eyebrows are. My eyebrows are pretty. Uh, they're like on the thicker side, but they're not quite like this, like the triangle, like little triangles. They're more like this size, but like this shape. Which one should I go with? I feel like this one's fine. Actually, let's see. Um, clothing. Um, can we change? I wonder if we can change the color. Or we just have to default to <laughs> the thickums eyebrows? Okay thumbs it is. Oh, I actually didn't realize the... They have similar prints, but they're different kinds of shirts. So let's see. Let's do this uh, off-the-shoulder look. Oh, look! This one even has straps. Kind of like my overall straps. We'll do that one. I think that's probably the closest. I wonder if we can... Oh, it doesn't look like we can change color. Band-aids, glasses, earrings. Actually, I have no piercings on me. Um, so don't have glasses. Band-aids. I think I am good here. What about uh? Ah, uh, okay. So this I saw being um talked about on the Lavender Studio Twitter. They have, and I've actually in general I've been seeing this show up a lot more in different visual novels, like indie visual novels. This ability to choose your pronouns and the terms that you're referred to as, or your OC, or however you're deciding to play the game, which I think is very cool. We're gonna choose both they, them, and she, her. Um, which terms do you prefer? I want it based on my pronouns. And how, how often do you want to randomize your pronouns? Um, I want, like, every new scene. And, even, and this is actually... I don't remember if I saw this last time 
or if this was even an option, but I... And at least here you can adjust how often you see certain pronouns. Pretty nice. Right now it's just one-to-one -one between the they, them, and she, her. So let's just keep it that way. Because I don't mind either. Uh, let's... Wait. Where's the, like... Oh, there we go. I was like, where's the... This is the person chapter, but where's, like, the eyes and stuff? Uh, I think I'm more like... This one? <laughs> Oh, I know. I, I always get, like, I can spend for hours doing character creation. Heterochromia. Whoa. You can have different colored eyes. Wanted. Oh, I'm so dumb. Okay, I was like, can we change the color? You can. It's over here. I'm just blind. So let's... Go back a bit. We can actually change our skin tone as well. Um, I'm like somewhere between these two. I'll go for the more tan one. And then eye color. Um, my eyes are brownish. <laughs> we'll go with brown. Or wait, what does orange look like? Oh, actually, that's kind of close, closer. Let's go with this, like, orangey color. And then... Hairstyle. Mmm. I think... This... This one is pretty similar. Closer to mine. Yeah, uh, even the color. Like, a whitish beige. Somewhere in between this. You can go with cream. Uh, next page. Hairstyle. Ooh, uh, the back. Um, what do you guys think? I feel like probably this one I have selected. This one? No, this is too long. It's definitely this one. <laughs> I think it has to be this one. <laughs> That's it for the avatar. So then the clothes you can change the color. Wow! It's just like me for real. Next. Oh, there's an outer clothing. Wait. That means. Hold on. Is there a like off the shoulder jacket? Oh dang, there's only. <laughs> no! You could. Okay, well. We'll just have to work with what we got. What's this? No, not this one. Mm, yeah. I think this is still pretty good. Uh, no accessories. I think that's pretty much it. Unless I'm missing something. Double check. Nope. Just the outer and then the inner. Doesn't look like you can change the... Oh, you can. You can change the outer clothing color as well. Wow. Oh, now it's even more like me. Oh my goodness. Hold on. We're cooking. Okay, I think this is good enough. Seashells? Where? Where seashells? Are there seashells somewhere? I don't, <laughs> I don't see the seashells. Oh, under accessories? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. There's just band-aids, glasses. Oh, just kidding. Look at you. You guys have better eyes than me. <laughs> uh, oh, we could do kind of hair clips. Eh. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, you wouldn't even be able to tell. Oh, look at this one. It's like even the star shape. And we can make it blue. Wow. Okay, I think that is. Oh, you. you... I can 
do the hat too, but if I do the hat, you can't do the, <laughs> the hair clip. Oh no. It's okay, I think the hair clip is close enough. Look, if we even want it, I can... We can match for real, I can be twinsies. Let's go. Hat off mode. <gasps> wow. Wouldn't even be able to guess. Am I up there or am I right here? <laughs> okay, now I think you've done everything. Chick. Ding. And today is Saturday. Also, I think by now, for anyone who's a frequent watcher, can kind of guess why I might have wanted to pick up this game. Um, and I just realized we are 14 minutes in, and I never introduced myself if there's any new watchers right now. Hello, I'm Calico Pascal, and I'm streaming to you live from the Float Harbor Aquarium. Welcome. Um, let's see. Okay. Looks like we are- I am in a good place. I'm not blocking the text box this time. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, I love this with the plant. Do people really do that to their cars? I, you know what? I have yet to see that out in Float Harbor. I wonder if it's like something that you couldn't realistically do, at least with a plant this big. I feel like you could potentially get pulled over for having like something obstructing your view. But maybe if it was small enough, like an air plant, like a really small air plant, you could probably do this. Maybe, don't, don't. <laughs> Don't trust me with that information. I'm not- I'm not liable or responsible for anything, okay? <laughs> I do like that this person's car also has these little- these little guys. And then also the stickers. I should- and also the stickers up here on the rear, rear view mirror. Probably deck out my car a little bit more now that I think of it. Alright. <clears throat> As you cruise down a deserted road, a gentle breeze caresses your face through an open window. The occasional jolts of the car unsettles you. However, you quickly dismiss it from your mind. You've just finished your first year in college. You've just finished your second year in college. Oh, okay, so this is determining how old how old we are. Um uh, We'll say I'm a I'm a senior. I am old. You've been looking forward to this trip. You were grinding through college relentlessly and finally had the chance to go back home to visit family and friends as a surprise over the summer. The summer! Best season of the year. You look down at your GPS, following the bright yellow line displayed on your screen. I also well. Okay, no, I'm not going crazy right i we're in like the middle of the road but the street is showing this <laughs> dotted dotted line doesn't that imply that there's two lanes on the road <laughs> well we'll just you'll just have to excuse my um my driving nobody else is here so i think it's okay <laughs> don't another don't listen to calico's driving advice psa I am simply a sea otter. I do not drive on the road. Sometimes you have to live dangerously. Exactly. It's the summer! Live your life. YOLO. This wasn't a road you were completely familiar with, nor was it anywhere near the freeway. Though, stupidly, you were persuaded by a video on Wickwalk <laughs> to reconnect with nature and thought it'd be faster than sitting through traffic jams or turbulence. No, Calico, watch out! You're about to- ah! Just kidding. Okay, Calico, just keep driving. It's probably nothing. You sigh to yourself and turn your radio up louder, hoping to drown out your anxiety. I knew I should have just taken a plane. This is the last time I'm listening to some random person on the internet. Yeah, those darn wick walkers. Just as you mentally shake your fist at the wick walk you watched, your thoughts are abruptly interrupted by the stuttering of your car's engine. Uh oh. Metallic clattering comes from the hood of your car, making your eyes widen in alarm. What? Before you could fully process what was happening, the car let out its final breath, stopping dead in the middle of nowhere. 
He sit in silence for a few minutes before inhaling deeply and stepping out of the car to observe its exterior. Oh, check out my sweet ride. Your eyes squint in annoyance as light smoke expels from the hood of your car. <sighs> Shit. What am I supposed to do now? Feeling a lump build up in your throat, you sit by a nearby rock to recollect yourself. Okay, no biggie. I'm just lost in the middle of nowhere, with no signal and no sign of life. Ugh! You bury your head deep into your hands and groan at the absurdity of the situation. No way, no way, no way! This cannot actually be happening. What is this, a bad 2000s Adam Dirtler movie? After what felt like an eternity under the scorching summer sun, the familiar growl of a well-functioning car catches your attention from a distance. Breathing a sigh of relief, you stand up and begin to wave frantically to grab the driver's attention. The car slows down and parks nearby. The engine pauses momentarily as the driver's door swings open. A man emerges from the car, donning a deep green jacket and tussled hair. Tussled brown hair, excuse me. Also that music change, you hear that? He looks at you with a curious gaze as he takes off his sunglasses to rest them on the collar of his shirt. Hey, is everything all right? Do you need help? Voice acting! Oh, you know we love a good voice acting. <laughs> what does it look like? I'm not really sure what to do. Thank God you came. I don't know anything. I'm simply a sea otter. Oh, actually, look, I'm kind of perfectly right on top of myself. <laughs> wow, twinsies. Hello. It's just like looking in a mirror. Thank you for stopping by. My car broke down and I'm not really sure what to do from here. He dips his head toward you, taking a peek at your car. He steps forward, examining your car and sighing lightly at the steam rising up from your vehicle. His hand motions to the broken heap of a car, meeting your eyes for a quick second. <sighs> I'm afraid that isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Might as well hop in with me and find shelter for the night. Hey yo, stranger danger. His hand taps the back of the car as he walks away, his hand gesturing for you to follow. Oh, but we all know the rules of visual novels. There's no such thing as stranger danger. You hesitate, as you only just met this man. He looks back at you for a moment before a light chuckle escapes his lips. <laughs> oh no, he's hot. <laughs> oh god, he smiled at me. Don't worry, you can trust me. He reaches into his pocket, taking out a small gold me golden medallion. Oh, he's the sheriff around these parts. You give him a reassured smile as you make your way to his car. The ride has been silent so far, but you don't mind. Look, he's driving in the middle of the road, too! We're all bad drivers out here. The ride has been silent so far, but you don't mind. The smell of sea salt pours in from the open pane, the cool wind combing through your hair. Mm. Your eyes close as you take in your surroundings. Enjoying the view? You open your eyes and turn to look at him. His hair was dancing along with the breeze coming from his open window, the lighter strands in his hair glistening under the sun. You pursed your lip for a moment and shrug. Eh, I guess it's alright. He lets out a small chuckle. You're a tough critic, aren't you? <laughs> his lips curl into a playful smirk and you can't help but smile back. Well, I have high standards. Or, I've seen better. I have high standards. I don't deny that. Well, I have high standards when it comes to views. Yeah, you can't beat Float Harbor. You think he'll notice you're staring at him without blinking? Uh, certainly not. Um, definitely. Um, um, he doesn't. He doesn't need to. No, don't worry about it. You sink deeper into the seat, getting yourself comfortable for the rest of the trip. He turns down the volume of the car radio, allowing the soothing sounds of nature to take center stage. Also look at this, the way the camera moves with my cursor. It's kind of a nice touch. Like, where am I looking? You don't know. You don't know, don't worry. So... 
probably be nice to get to know your travel buddy for the next god knows how many hours. Might as well break the ice. Where are we headed? How long have you been a sheriff? Say nothing. How long have you been a sheriff? Tell me about yourself, stranger. Hmm. A good few years, actually. Probably as soon as I graduated. Not that I mind. I love this job. I get to help people. Like you! You poor sucker. End of the day, that's all that really matters to me. That's pretty nice. I guess so. Never really seen myself doing anything else. He smiles to himself. <laughs> Where are we headed? Or I don't think I have anything else to ask. Now let's just keep talking. <clears throat> You don't mind me asking, where are we headed? Ah, my town, Brine Bay. Ever heard of it? Hmm, don't think so. It doesn't sound familiar. But, you know, I imagine Brine Bay and Float Harbor might be kind of similar here and there. Just taking a wild guess. You think to yourself for a moment, racking your memory for any mention of Brine Bay. Nope, doesn't ring a bell. He nods to himself as you speak. I don't blame you. We're not too well known. I promise you that you'll like your stay though. You got great views. Actually, I'd like to ask you the same. What are you doing out here? Well, I was trying to visit home from college. Haven't been back for a while and was feeling a little homesick. Just my luck to have my car break down when I try though, right? <laughs> he offhandedly laughs at your joke and taps lightly on the steering wheel. Yeah, that does suck. Hey, no worries. We'll get you back on the road in no time. He lets go of the wheel for a brief moment to give you a pat on the shoulder before focusing on the drive again. I don't think I have anything else to ask him for now. A moment of silence lingers between the two of you before he abruptly breaks it. You weren't out there for too long, were you? <laughs> well, it felt like forever. You have no idea. <laughs> Well, it felt like forever, but I guess it wasn't that bad. I'm just relieved you showed up when you did. He smiles and nods in response, his eyes glued to the- uh, on the outstretched road ahead. Jean, by the way. Oh, hello, Jean. Turn to face him, head tilted in confusion. He takes notice of your lack of response and turns to look at you. My name, it's Jean. Your mouth opens briefly, forming a silent, oh. I'm Calico. Calico, that's a nice name. He shoots you a gentle smile before adjusting his eyes back on the road. You turn back to the open window, taking in the view once more. The lull of the engine paired with the heavy crashing of the ocean waves began to take over your thoughts, making your eyelids grow heavier by the minute. Before you knew it, you were dead asleep. Exhaustion from the long day of driving mixed with stress finally took over. No, oh, no, no, I'm Eevees. Your eyes struggle to blink open as the sun shyly peeked over the clouds. It beams greeted you ever so lovingly, the warmth creating a gentle blanket over you. You lift yourself off the car door, off of the car door, stretching the sleepiness away. Your eyes eventually find Jean, his hand having a firm grip on the wheel and head turned towards you. Morning there, sleepyhead. You're awake just in time. His head gestures ahead of the car. Your gaze follows his cue to a small, old-fashioned building. The car comes to a rolling stop into the makeshift parking lot. Jean's deep voice pulls you out of your thoughts. This right here is Coral Inn, a hostel. You can stay here for the night. And don't worry about the pay. I've covered tonight for you. It's the least I could do, considering the day you've had. Wow. For me? For free? I get to be here for free? You walk inside, just a little to your right should be the front desk. Just explain your situation and my buddy Dante will get you all set up. Say nothing? I'm staying here? Thank you. Do you do this for all the people you pick up off the street? No, we just say thank you. Don't ask questions, Calico. Just go with it, it's free. Thank you so much for your help. I'd seriously be so screwed if you didn't show up. He gives you a warm smile. No problem at all. You're just glad to lend a hand. <clears throat> Give him a smile back and gather your belongings from his back seat. Oh. Before I forget about your car, there's only one mechanic around here and his name is Kai. Take my number and I'll send you his address. Wow, he just gave us his number like that? Man. 
<laughs> you type his number into your contacts and give him your sincere thanks once again. The two of you wave goodbye as you shut the door behind you. He pulls out the park out of the parking lot, leaving you to brave the hostel on your own. Wow, look at how cute. It's sunset time. You stand in the open for a moment, breathing in deeply. <sighs> there is the smell of nearby plants mingled with the damp industrial material of the building. Helps you get a hold of your new surroundings. You grew up in the city, or you grew up in a small town. I grew up in a small town. Yep, just like home. Sure, it wasn't exactly where you wanted to go, but it was close enough. The refreshing, clean air was reminiscent of your childhood town, which was drastically different from the city you've been staying in for college. It was nice to be back in a quieter environment. A flock of birds chirp overhead, flying in formation towards the horizon. Watching them, you realize the sun was beginning to set right past the small corner lots of shops. The sun's setting already? How long have we been driving? What Also, what happened to... Visiting, uh... Well, I guess we can just call and let people know that we're stuck at the moment. Because our whole objective was to get back to our hometown, I believe. Glad I didn't choose to just walk to society. I probably would have been walking for days. You look down at your watch to plan your next course of events. Your body was practically begging you to crash in for the day. Although you really should be getting your car sorted out first. Yeah, it's still out there. All alone. Go to the car mechanic or just go to bed. Uh, I probably don't want to be out here for too long, so we should go visit the mechanic. Think it over for a minute and decide it would be best to talk to Kai as soon as possible. I really should get this sorted out first. You lug your backpack over your shoulders and check your phone for the address. Following the directions on the text from Jean, you make your way to the workshop to meet Kai. As you approach closer, the sound of clanging tools paired by machinery fills your ears, the faint aroma of grease and oil growing more noticeable with each step. The large car-filled building seemed vacant except for a figure bent over, peering into the hood of a car. Kai? You call out to no response. The hum of the car was overpowering your voice. Kai? You call out a little louder. The figure finally stood up and turned to face you. A large grin was plastered on his face as he rubbed dirt and grease off with his forearm, hands still clasping a wrench. Get his number that easily. Is this game labeled fantasy? Hmm. In an ideal world. Remember, there's no stranger danger in visual novels. Well, well, uh, you must be new here. Before you could open your mouth to reply, he quickly cuts you off with a broad grin. Trust me, I'd remember a face as a- Whoa! As a, a face as attractive as yours. Hello? He winks a little and leans back against the car, grabbing a nearby cloth to clean his wrench and hands. To a day of the pleasure. <laughs> his tone lingered, prompting you to introduce yourself. I'm Calico. I was actually headed west until my car broke down near the forest. That's on me, I guess. I should have gotten my car checked out a good while ago. You look down to your shoes, fidgeting them against each other. Luckily, Jean found me and brought me here so that you can help me fix my car. You look back up at him and smile awkwardly, feeling a bit embarrassed about the whole situation. He let out a short laugh and nodded before putting his wrench down. Well, that won't be much of a problem. I'll head there with Jean later in the day. Although, I do have to warn you, it's going to take a good while to fix it, especially if you're not from here. The spare parts here are pretty dated, and so are our cars, so it might take a while. Oh no, I'm trapped. Your worry must have been visible because he pushed himself off the car immediately and defensively threw his hands up with open palms. No, no, don't worry. You can trust me. My family has been working on cars since this town was founded. I promise to get it working as soon as humanly possible. He pats your shoulder lightly and gives you a warm smile. You can give me your You can give me your number and I'll keep you updated on things. Hey man. I don't know. <laughs> Here's my number. Good luck with the repairs. It better be as good as new. Or if you wanted my number, you could have just said so. <laughs> We're gonna give him the benefit of the doubt here. 
He chuckled a little at how frantic he got and nodded. The numbers, man, they keep flying. What is this, algebra? Thanks for the reassurance. I appreciate it. He grabs his phone out of his pocket and hands it over to you, the screen displaying a small prompt for your information. As you type in your number, you spot him peeking over to the side. His deep, brown eyes scan all over your face, almost as if he were studying you down to your smallest features. You feel your face flush for a moment before handing it back to him. There you go. I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Great. I'll send you a message when I get around to working on it. Hope you have a good time here. He gives you another wink before turning around to continue working on the car behind him. Alright, time to get myself some sleep. I'm beat. Your shoes crunch against gravel as you make your way towards the entrance. The steps of the inn's wood and porch creak with each step, making you hurriedly take strong longer strides. As you open the door, you're greeted with surprisingly homey, homely decor. My goodness. The state of the building itself was just as decrepit as the exterior, if not worse, but someone was definitely doing their best to make it look good. Recalling Jean's directions, you take a few steps towards the right. A small wooden counter comes into view, a few monitors lined up on it, though only one seemed functional. You notice a man sitting behind one of them, the name tag on his shirt read Dante. He didn't exactly look ecstatic to be there, but he also didn't look like he hated it. Uh, hey there. I'm Calico. I think Jean might have mentioned me to you? You hold your breath, hoping Jean wasn't lying about paying for the night. Dante looks you up and down for a moment with a puzzled look before looking down at his phone. Oh, huh. Yes, he did. Alright then. He sighs to himself before standing up. You're stunned for a quick second as he towers over you. He turns to grab a couple papers from the shelf of files and books behind him. With a soft thump, a pile of papers falls in front of you. Okay, Calico. All you have to do is sign a few things and you should be good to go. You write down your information, occasionally glancing up towards him. He was back in his seat, tapping on the table with a pen and glaring right into your soul. Oh no. No, no, please. Don't judge me. Jeez, creepy. All done. He slides over a small metal key with slight rust on its edges. Your room should be number... <laughs> 69. Don't make too much noise and no hot water past 9 p.m. Oh, that kind of sucks. Even for... Yes, even for small amounts like tea. What? No tea past 9 p.m.? Absurd. Okay, good night then. He ignores you and goes back to scrolling on his phone. Well, isn't he just the most hospitable? You walk, around, you walk around the hostel, mentally counting each door and giggling to yourself over the childish number. <laughs> you eventually end up on the second floor, finding a room right by the stairs. Like you're just not allowed to have hot water in your presence? I guess not. Not over here. Okay, Jean, let's hope this room isn't that bad. Taking a sharp breath, you insert the key and turn, not expecting much of a view. Whoa. For being a rundown place, this was a pretty nice room. Much better than you would have expected from the exterior or lobby. Yeah, what in the world? This is really well furnished. Two large windows greeted you, luminescent moonlight shining through and illuminating the dark room. Despite being summer, the well-conditioned room made a cool breeze wash over your body. Not bad, Jean. Not bad. I guess it wouldn't hurt to calico the room a little. Dropping your backpack and kicking off your shoes, you begin to set up the room to fit more of your liking. Wow! Pull it up. Oh my gosh, we can decorate our room. Yes, plushies. Clock. Oh my gosh, you can even change the type of clock. Whoa, cute! Okay, obviously, we go fish. What's on the wall? Mirror, corkboard, fairy lights, or posters. Let's see. Oh, cute! Corkboard. Mirror. I like uh, the fairy lights. What our desk? Oh, <laughs> seashell on the desk. Conch shell plant, lava lamp, or framed photo. Okay, obviously, conch shell. Hangable. <gasps> Surfboard. Surfboard. Wooden boards. Oh, cute! They're little seashell shapes. Or a boot. Oh my goodness. Oh no, how do I pick between these? These are all really good. 
I like the surfboard. Okay. Wow. It's my room. Taking a step. Wait, why are why are, <laughs> why are we decorating the room that we're staying in for like how many days? Where did all our stuff come from? <laughs> Wasn't our car left behind on the road? Or how did we carry all this stuff in our backpack? It's like a Mary Poppins situation. Taking a step back, you place your hands on your hips and let out a satisfied sigh to the newly decorated room. <laughs> First thing I do when I get into a hotel is decorate. Duh. There we go. Much better. You change out of your clothes before falling on to the comfort of the bed. Your body melts into the, into the mattress and you quietly thank Jean for being generous enough to rent you a room. This beats the car any day. Thoughts about ways to repay him linger as you are soothed to sleep by the night's embrace. Hongshu, Hongshu. Me, 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 me. And today is Sunday. Your eyes gently flutter open to the sight of the hostel room, lightly glazed with the warm sunrise glow. Wow, look at our cute, cute, cute room. It's so good. You raise your body slowly and stretch, feeling much better than you did the day prior. Hopping off the bed, you take small steps into the bathroom and get yourself ready for the day ahead. Thankfully, the hostel was kind enough to include toiletries and fresh towels. Ah, much better. Taking one last look at yourself in the mirror, you gather your essentials and leave the room. As you step into the lobby, you are met with Dante's grouchy face. He sits behind the front desk with his legs up and a magazine in hand. Morning, Dante. He gives you a quick glance before placing his attention back to the magazine. Morning, Calico. Did you get a good night's rest? Despite asking, oh, despite asking, you could tell it was more of an automated response for good customer service rather than genuine curiosity. Maybe hey, Gronk interlinked. It could have been better. Or yeah, I did. I guess it must have been good because I seem like I'm in a pretty good mood. Hey, welcome, GTGN. Also, I didn't. I don't think I said hello, Alden, but welcome. Yeah, I did actually. Thank you for asking. I was wondering if there was anywhere nearby I might be able to get a bite. I'm pretty hungry. I haven't really had anything but trail mix. Oh man, we are starving. We are in desperate times here. There's a diner not too far from here. Just walk down the road and you'll run into it, I'm sure. He reaches under his desk and pulls out a pamphlet, holding it out for you. Thanks, man. While I'm here, could I know how much it'll cost me for another night here? You reach your hands into your pocket for your wallet. About $70. No more, no less. You freeze. You aren't broke, but you definitely don't have enough money to pay $70 a night. Plus, there was still the cost of whatever repairs needed to be done on your car. I'm not sure if I can afford that, actually. I might have to find somewhere else to crash. And here we just spent our night decorating the room. Dante sighs. Look, there's no other place you can stay. It's a small town, kid. It's either pay up or get comfy on the streets. No! I'm just a little guy. Don't kick me out, please. Please, 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 please. You shuffle uncomfortably hearing this. You really don't like the idea of sleeping outside, but you seriously don't have enough money for another night. Dante clears his throat to get your attention. You didn't even realize you were completely zoned out. He gives you a pitied sigh and looks up at you putting his magazine down on the desk. Not sure if you'll be up for it, but I heard from word of mouth that the diner I mentioned was hiring. <gasps> Part-time job? Could be a long shot, but it's the best chance you have right now. And since you're a friend of Jean's, I guess I can lower it to 50 a night. You good with that? Wow, the homey discount. You tap your fingers impatiently on the corner. You aren't sure about getting a job in a town you don't even plan to stay long in. Especially during a time that was supposed to be a vacation of sorts. How can we say this when we just decorated our room <laughs> yesterday? <laughs> Though after weighing out your options, working for a while compared to being homeless in an unfamiliar place doesn't seem bad at all. Alright, alright. I'll keep that in mind when I grab a bite. Thanks again. He gives you a cordial nod before leading back in his into his chair to continue reading his magazine. You walk around the town, a pamphlet in hand and a goal to fulfill. The diner. 
Where is the diner? We are very attached to this place. We don't want to stay long in. <laughs> it's just so homey. It reminds me of home. Look, doesn't it kind of look like Float Harbor? I think so. Just a little bit. As you scan your surroundings for the diner, you see a disheveled, red-haired man struggling with a heavy load of paint canisters in his arms. His grip falters every so often, and the cans threaten to slip from his arms and crash to the ground. <laughs> so that's what Float Harbor looks like. Yeah, it's just like, kind of a beachy town. Help him out, or leave to find the diner. Do we leave the poor sucker? No, I feel like we help. We be, let's, let's, let's be nice. Running over, you brace yourself against the heavy wood framed door and shove it open with your back. The scent of old parchment and pine immediately hits your face as soon as you open the door. It's comforting, nostalgic almost. The man gives you a quick thanks and rushes in, disappearing behind a curtain at the back of the store. Your eyes wander around the building you had entered and notice the wooden shelves lining the walls stacked with books. Some looked old and worn, while others looked new and untouched. Ooh, a little library? library moment. Gently push the door shut and step into the store. A soft ding echoes, signaling your entrance. You always imagine Float Harbor Aquarium. It's like every aquarium I've been to put together. That's... that's a... Uh, I would say, yeah. That's a good way to put it. Well, you remember that there's Float Harbor Aquarium and then the city which Float Harbor Aquarium resides in, which is Float Harbor. You feel the warmth of the sun fade as you move further inside. With your hand outstretched, you glide your fingers across the long rows of books, feeling their distinct textures and designs. Oh, we got another uh, music change. Looking up at one of the shelves, a familiar title catches your eye and you make your way towards it. Wow, we're getting distracted. We were supposed to go find the diner, but we have now stumbled into a library. Very um, calico core, I must say. <laughs> Very scatterbrained sometimes. I haven't seen this series in forever. Wait, has there always been this many volumes? Trials of Tempest. The series that held so many fond memories of your childhood. You hated reading, but this one was the exception. Or you loved reading, and this one was your favorite. You and your friends would read it occasionally. Or you liked to read it with your parents. I do like reading. Fun, fun fact. When I was a little baby otter... Mama Pascal and Papa Pascal, uh, they pretty much turned me into a bookworm. I think I read a lot of books, but at some point I stopped because I was... I think, like, this is a similar story for a lot of people. They get forced to read for, like, an assignment or something, and then they just start losing interest in reading for a uh, hobby at that point. So, unfortunately, I don't read, I would I don't read, like, novels or, uh, like, textbooks as much as I used to, but I still do read a lot. I just don't read, like, full, just text alone. You get what I mean? Like, I read a lot of comics and graphic novels and obviously, like, a lot of everything you read online, you're, you're still reading. So I do a lot of reading, but just not typical hardcover textbook reading. <laughs> reading was a common pastime for you, and Trials of Tempest happened to be one of your favorites. Rather than going outside or playing with friends, you choose to instead get comfortable in your bed and read. Oh, I miss- I do miss those days, so... <laughs> Eventually, the author stopped producing new volumes, so any hope of new stories was quickly dimmed out. You're quite tall, so grabbing the book wasn't an issue. Having average height, reaching for the book required a bit of stretching. Being on the shorter side, you struggle to reach the book. Uh, I am 5'2". So I'm, I think I'm like just barely within the average height range, but closer to the shorter end and definitely not tall. So uh, let's just say I'm average, <laughs> just but just barely. <laughs> You smile to yourself and reach up for the book. Forced reading does suck, and yeah, I 100% I, I agree. I also hated 
when teachers would tell you. So I've had both sides of the spectrums where I've had an English teacher say that reading comics and like graphic novels was not reading. And then in high school, I later had another English teacher who said the complete opposite and said that graphic novels and comics were a valid source of reading material, which was very nice. Your legs wobble a bit as your feet strain against the ground, a small ache going through your arms. Suddenly, a shadow looms over you and you feel a large hand gently rest on your shoulder. The subtle pressure makes you lay your feet flat on the floor, grounding you and releasing the tension in your body from stretching. Average height otter? No, don't, don't give me that look. I'm average height. <laughs> you watch as another hand gently grabs the book before you could. You turn around and see the man from earlier smiling softly at the book, brushing off any dust from its cover. Wait a minute, I was- why, why are you stealing my book, man? A low chuckle escapes him and he shifts his gaze towards you. <laughs> Trials of Tempest. I'm surprised anyone else knows about this book. I used to love this series as a kid. What about you? He holds the book out to you, letting you take hold of it. You take it, observing its cover. Yep, definitely haven't read this volume yet. Stay silent. I'm sure almost everyone's read it. Me too, but I've never seen this one. This is a special copy, actually. I bet you thought it ended at Journey to the Storm God, right? You nodded. That was the last volume released before the author stated publicly that he was too old to continue the series. The author actually used to live in this town. He dried out a few more stories and kept them in this very shop. <gasps> wow! No way. He looked back down at the book. There were more? And the author was from here? <laughs> he certainly didn't expect that when your car broke down on some random road. Hey. How about for helping me earlier, I'll lend you the books. You can take this one with you. Just come back for the next few volumes. Wait. When did we help this guy? <laughs> Lend. He takes notice of your confused expression and chuckles again. I work here. Don't worry. I might look rough, but trust- Oh! He's the guy we helped earlier! Okay. I was like, huh? Wah, wah. Calco face blind? That's not true. I'm not. <laughs> uh, I might look rough, but trust me. I'm not a fan of breaking and entering. And the story isn't that popular anyways. No one would notice if they weren't stuck. Plus, you're new, right? Dante mentioned we had a new face in town. Wow, word spreads fast. I literally arrived here yesterday. You don't have much except for this one cool thing, so... I want to give you something from our little corner of the world to remember. You smile and put the book in your backpack. Thank you, I'll take care of it. He takes notice of the pamphlet you had in hand. Oh, were you looking for Cup yes, of Joe Mama? Yes, average. I am average height otter. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, were you- What? Excuse me? The the diner is called Cup of Joe Mama? <laughs> yes, actually. Wait, how do we know that's what the diner was called? Did he say that? I don't remember that. He just said there was a diner. Yes, actually. Dante said it was just down the road, but I can't find it anywhere. Down the road? It's literally on the other side of town. In fact, any further from here and you'd be at the beach. You pause for a moment and mentally face palm yourself. Dante never specified which direction to go, and you had ended up going the wrong way. <laughs> he stifles his laugh with his hand and shakes his head. Classic Dante. Man, he's an asshole. Tell me about it, dude. But he offered me the homie discount for $50 a night. That's still... It's still kind of on the expensive side, but it is $20 off a night. He can't help but laugh along. It was sort of comforting to hear that. It just meant Dante was rude to everyone, and not just you. Truthfully, you were starting to feel like he had a personal vendetta against you. What were the paints for? Are you friends with Dante? Or leave for the diner? You just say peace. Uh, but let's be nosy and ask what were what was up with all the paints earlier. So may I ask what the paints were for? Oh, 
Just a little something I've been trying to work on. It's nothing too big. His lips curl into a strained smile, the dimples on his cheeks becoming more noticeable. Uh, alright. Fine. Keep your secrets. I don't need to know. Are you friends with Dante? He seemed to know him pretty well. Are you and Dante friends? Eh, something like that. He knew my old boss, so I guess we're more acquaintances. He usually comes over for new magazines, or just books for the hostel lobby. Ah, I see. I guess I should get going now. Any longer, my stomach might burst. Yeah, we've only been eating on <laughs> trail mix since yesterday. Well, I'm gonna go to the diner before I miss out on breakfast. Thanks again for the book! No problem. Uh, he pauses for a moment. Calico. Calico. No problem, Calico. Andrew, by the way. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Andrew. I'll see you around. Give him a smile and wave goodbye as you leave the bookstore. So, the diner is on the other side of town. God, kill me now. Following Andrew's advice, there it was. The words, Cup of Joe Mama, plastered not only on the sign above, but also hand-painted on the window. Your stomach grumbles the second you lay eyes on it. This was your sign to make a break for it. Oh my gosh, it's like... Americana-ish. I love a good, uh, Americana diner. And one by the beach? That's aesthetic vibes right there. Also, again, the music changed. And a bump in. He opened the door, immediately hit with the sweet smell of roasted coffee beans and greasy bacon. If there's anything that I like, there's nothing else that I like more than a good American diner breakfast. How cozy. You make a beeline to a booth, ringing the small steel bell on the table. You take a look around. The place is filled with families of all sizes, though you can only see one waiter. He seems to have his full attention on the cash register. His head perks up from the registry, and you watch as he grabs a small notebook rushing over to you. Hi! Uh, what can I get for you today? Oh my god! You're wearing overalls too! We're matchies! He's a bit quiet, but nonetheless you understood him perfectly. Is this a bad time to order? No, no, definitely not a bad time. The other waiters are just on leave. Summer, you know? He gives you a toothy grin and you can't help but smile back. He suddenly raises an eyebrow, his eyes trilling your face. Are you new here? I don't think I've seen you around before. Why do you ask? Uh, obviously because he doesn't recognize us. Yes, I'm new. <laughs> oh yeah, I am. My car broke down, so I'll be here until that gets fixed. Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, no problem. My good friend Kai can get that all sorted for you, I'm sure. Wait, why are you suddenly joining? <laughs> Hold on. Aren't you- wait, what about all the other people in the diner? Aren't you busy? <laughs> what are you doing, dude? <laughs> you continue explaining your situation to him, not holding back on the little details. So much so that you hadn't noticed he was now sitting in front of you. His eyes don't seem to leave yours, paying close attention to your words. A stark difference from Dante. It's pretty refreshing. Wow, that sounds like a lot. But hey, what's a trip with an empty stomach, right? As if on cue, your stomach emits a loud rumble, which makes both, <laughs> which makes the both of you burst out laughing. Well then, what would you like to eat? On the house. I know you're low in cash right now. Wait, who told you that? Did I? Did I say that I was broke? <laughs> Where is this spreading so fast? Who's... Is Jean the, like, town gossiper? Everybody knows about me somehow. And Calco matters more. But what about all these poor people? They're hungry. You know, considering the hostel and car costs. Oh, I guess I just... I did just tell him everything. That's why he's sitting here listening to me blabble. Are you sure? I don't mind using a few dollars. He shakes his head, his messy blonde waves bouncing as he does. Take it as a welcoming gift. He looked down at the worn out menu laid in front of right dad. He looked down at the worn out menu laid before you. Well, if you insist. 
I'll get... <gasps> oh my god, we can choose the food. Ooh, we have pancakes and omelette, cinnamon rolls, mushroom soup, fruit salad, beans on toast, eggs benedict, or waffles. Mm. Way too many options. No, no, Noni. This is the perfect <laughs> amount of options. You, you presenting me a lot of food options. That's what I like to see. Um, out of all these things, depends on my mood. I'm pretty sure I must have talked about this on stream before, but I think, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know which I like better. It really depends because I like both sweet and savory breakfast options. Um, actually, speaking of which, today I just had a little of both. <laughs> I had both a sweet and a savory breakfast this morning, which ironically was both an omelet and pancakes. So I think I'll just go with the omelet because I think more or less on a regular day, I'd probably go with an omelet and only on special occasions do I ever feel like having a pancake. It's not like I wake up every morning and I'm like, oh boy, you know what sounds great? No, that's, that's a lie. I take that back. I do think about pancakes when I wake up in the morning, uh, but I don't act out and eat pancakes every morning. Um, so eggs is probably more of a regular thing. Oh my god, there- <laughs> oh no! Too many options! Now we can customize the omelette. Do you want anything inside of your omelette? Nothing. Cheese, turkey, bell peppers, tomatoes, onions, crab, or bacon. Oh my god, hell yeah, crab. Seafood omelette? Let's go. Oh my god, we can choose more! <laughs> um... So there's crab now, and then either cheese, bacon, bell peppers, turkey, onion, spinach, mushrooms, or tomatoes. Uh, I like spinach. Oh my god, there's more. <laughs> so now we have crab, spinach, omelette. We can put one more. Um, I guess mushrooms. Okay, and then that's it. No, we can even add one more if you wanted. Let's not go crazy. I think three is more than enough. Would you like anything else? Oh my god, we can order more! <laughs> um... Wait, how- He said it was on the house, right? So... Can I just... I, I don't have to- I don't have to think about this too hard, right? Free is free. I'll take pancakes. You know, I love a good game that gives you a lot of options, so there's no complaints here. Um, this is a very immersive experience. You Now all of you get to know how I would customize my breakfast if you were to go to a diner with me, Calco Pascal. This is my breakfast if I had the choice every day and the cost did not matter. What do I want on my pancakes? Uh, fresh berries, maple syrup, butter, strawberry syrup, whipped cream, fresh fruit, caramel syrup. Um, I like butter and sometimes whipped cream, not all the time. Oh, nuts and, or peanut butter. Uh, I already said butter. Go with fresh fruit and oh my god, I have to choose more. Fresh, uh, fresh fruit and fresh berries. Sausages. Hold up. We are. This is an insane pancake. Butter, fresh fruit, fresh berries. I guess whipped cream. Wait, what? Brown. <laughs> we could have fried chicken too with our pancakes. What's fresh? Fresh fruit, fresh berries, whipped cream, butter. Um, maple syrup? Okay, no more. This is, this is a stacked pancake. That'll be all. <laughs> Peanut butter fried chicken pancake. <laughs> Let's go. Would you like anything else? Oh my. Ow. This is a lot of food. Um... <laughs> oh! Oh my gosh, I didn't even know that this was a squash. <laughs> I was like, 
how many options am I supposed to choose? Didn't realize that you could scroll. Okay, please. This is a lot of food. That'll be all. Well, welcome, Zephy. <laughs> Happy Thursday. <laughs> we just ordered a ton of food. <laughs> um, if I can remember off the top of my head, we just ordered an omelet with crab, spinach, mushroom, and then pancakes with fresh fruit, fresh berries, <laughs> maple syrup, butter, whipped cream. So that's, we are gonna be supercharged for the day. <laughs> he looks up from his notebook after jolting your order down, flashing you a friendly smile. It's probably like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> this person's trying to make us go broke. Great, I'll come back in a bit with your order. You watch the man make his way towards the kitchen, where your eyes take notice of a help wanted poster, messily, messily plastered up on a notice board. I feel <laughs> we just ordered so much food and there's only one waiter here who sat down and listened to my woes and took my gigantic order. We are going to run this business dry. <laughs> it looks as if it had been up there for a while as the corners are torn and strained with a mysterious liquid. Dante's words echo through your mind as you're reminded of your lack of money. Just eat the whole diner. You're right. You're so right. Right, a job. I'll ask the wa that waiter about it when he comes back. I'm the one funding his business? I thought he said... Am I mistaken? I think he said it, it was on the house even though I offered to pay with the little money I have. And then he was like, no, no. Please. Your car and your... your your rent, essentially. Please welcome new new person. A few moments pass before you see him approaching your booth, carefully holding your food and gracefully maneuvering through the tables nearby with his signature smile. He's funding his business. Here you go. Hope you enjoy your meal. Just call out to me if there's anything else you'd like. He gives you a small nod and turns to leave. Wait, I saw that this place is hiring. Are positions still open or am I too late? His head snaps towards you, his face painted with surprise and eyes gleaming with excitement. Uh, yes! Yes! They're still open. Oh man, we've been looking for some help for ages. I'm so happy that you're interested. No, oh, I just... I mean... I was kind of forced into this. I need to pay the bills. And now I feel <laughs> guilty for eating all your food. <laughs> his voice rises into a normal speaking volume as he lets his eagerness show. Taking a quick glance around the bustling diner, it is obvious to anyone that they were severely understaffed. Give him a big smile. You can tell he's going to be a great coworker. That is, if you get hired. So, am I going to need to submit my resume to apply? Who should I even talk to? You peek past his figure to see if you can spot a manager running around. His face fills your view as he moves his head to meet your searching eyes. His smile was unwavering. I think the person you're looking for is yours truly. Oh, and no worries about the resume. What? What? You're hired? I would at least like to know your name, though. Man, just like that? You raise an eyebrow at him. You were happy to be employed, but you question the practices of the diner under this man's management. You notice he's fidgeting with his uniform as the two of you speak. You wonder how he even survived this long in this line of work being the quiet man he is. Right, uh, my name. It's Calico. Damn, he's in for a surprise when he found- I'm not a convicted felon! Hey, Calico. You can finish eating here and meet me in the back. I'll be happy to show you all you need to know. Without another word, he starts to walk away before quickly turning his head to look at you again. Uh, by the way, my name's Chris. It was nice to meet you. Chris then continues to the register where a small line of people are waiting to pay. These poor people have been standing by the register with no one to, to take their money. Because <laughs> you've been talking to me and feeding me this whole time. It was nice to meet you too, Chris. He's already busy with another customer by the time you answer back. Once full and content, you make your way toward the staff door. Well, you can only assume it was a staff door. Chris flew out of it with a few dishes in hand a moment before.
As you step through, your nose is hit by a delicious mixture of aromas created by all the different meals being prepared. Your smelling escapade is interrupted by Chris hastily bustling through the swinging door, dirty plates stacked in his hands. He lets out a small gasp upon seeing you. <laughs> hey. Give me a second, please. You nod as he brushes past you, quickly placing the dishes in the water-filled metal sink. He hit the bottom of it with a muted clank. Chris grabs a cloth, drying his hands while he turns to you. He lets out an, an exhausted sigh. We'll start your training in just a moment. I just... I need this. His eyes tell you everything you need to know as he looks at you. Pro he has probably been on his feet all day. This poor guy. <laughs> you watch as he lays back on the wall, sweeping away some sweat droplets on his forehead. His slightly disheveled hair frames his eyes as he gazes at the ceiling. His eyes suddenly meet yours, a shock running through your body. Quickly look away, embarrassed that he caught you. From the corner of your eye, you see him straighten up and sheepishly reach a hand behind his neck. A single thought then snaps you out of your embarrassment. Wait, did he say training? Oh yeah, that's right, we have to work. Hold on, we're starting our training and now? Are you sure this is the best time? Chris drops his hand and nods his head gently. We need help as soon as we can possibly get. Summer has been one of our busiest, so I would love it if you could- if I could work with you right away. Wait... I mean... I guess I don't have any other things to do. If that's okay with you, of course. His eyes wander away and his voice trails off into a faint whisper toward the end of his sentence. Of course that's okay with me. I'd be glad to help you. I was hoping to explore the town a little more. I do feel bad though, I just <laughs> ate a bunch of food and I'm not even paying. So let's help a little bit. Yeah, of course that's okay with me. I'd be glad to help you out. Can't leave you in your time of need. I guess you are helping me in mine. You give him a reassuring smile and place your hands on your hips, excited to lend a hand to your newfound friend. A buddy. Alright then, teach me your ways. Time seems to fly, with only a couple minutes of your shift remaining. Wait, so we were just hired on the spot like that, and then we just started working immediately? You paid careful attention to any upcoming orders. Wish that was reality. <laughs> Now's not the time to be making any mistakes. It could hinder your chance to leave early. You peer out of the serving hatch towards Chris, preparing yourself to cook like your heart depended on it. Wait, uh, we're putting on- we're being put on cooking duty? couple minutes, you can do this. The familiar bell of the door rings and you quickly fix your eyes towards the entrance. Instead of a small family or elderly person like you've seen all day, a young man walks in. <laughs> Damn, this is how my parents think jobs are given out. It's okay. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> he looks probably in his early 30s. His sleek, long, blonde hair framed his face. His captivating eyes made it almost hard for you to look away. Enchanting, hypnotizing. Who is this guy? I feel like you've seen him somewhere, but you can't quite put your finger on it. All that to say, he didn't look the most approachable. He looked around with a slight scowl, seemingly prepared to book it. Your eyes briefly meet, and you can almost swear he gave you a half smile before finding a booth to be seated in. Doesn't look like one of the townsfolk at all. Could he be another visitor? He turned to look at Chris, who seems to be just as puzzled as you are. He shrugs at you and clutches his small notepad, making his way over to the man. You aren't sure if it's because he's tired or not, but Chris's usual upbeat manner for new customers looked <laughs> diminished. Welcome to Cup of Joe Mama. What can I get for you today? Since you've started working with Chris, you notice a pattern with him. Wait, we've only been working... today. <laughs> Are we that observant? At first... He'd stick with his usual script of asking someone what they wanted, but if the customer went off script and asked something he wasn't used to hearing, he'd falter. Wow, well, just Can like I me. Can I get the... omelette? But with just the egg whites. And blindly beaten, not whisked. Whisking makes my face bloat. Wow. <laughs> I've got a shoot next week. I can't be bloated now, can I? Uh... Use pink Himalayan salt, if possible. I don't want any preservatives in my system. <laughs> okay, Fabio. <laughs> oh, and hold on any extra spices. I'm a simple man. 
just salt, pepper, a hint of tarragon, and a pinch of cumin will do. I <laughs> guess. <laughs> just like all simple men. You know, salt, pepper, some tarragon, and a pinch of cumin. Also, don't cook it the American way. Do it French. I prefer my food. Authentic. You are authentic, yes? The well-seated man nods his head towards the large window beside him. The words, authentic homemade recipes, plastered outside in a large red font. I, uh, yes? Good. The man pulls out his wallet and pays for his food. Chris comes back with a small torn page, slowly pushing it over to you. Um, sorry, Calico. I didn't get most of that. It's alright, Chris. I'm sure none of the things he mentioned are real <laughs> anyways. <laughs> don't worry about it. Tarragon and cumin? What the heck are those? I don't know anything. <laughs> he giggles and nods. Yeah, okay. Do your best anyways. With that, Chris leaves to clean a few empty tables from the customers that had just left. How hard could it be? Crack a couple of eggs, separate the yolks from the whites, and mix it lightly. You got it, Calico. You grab a bowl and confidently crack the first egg, successfully separating the yolk from the whites with ease. Oh my god. I'm basically Gordon Ramsley. <laughs> Gordine Ramsley, excuse me. Feeling optimistic, you move on to the second egg. However, this time, the yolk breaks and drips into the egg whites. No! Eh, a little yolk wouldn't hurt. You probably wouldn't even notice. You start mixing, aiming for a light and fluffy look. Despite your efforts, however, the whites refuse to cooperate. I should just whisk it at this point. <laughs> you hold on to the whisk with a strong grip and mix vigorously, trying to salvage the situation. Instead of forming soft peaks, they remain stubbornly runny and lackluster. Wow, this is not giving Chibli. Oh my god. <laughs> No, it's not like my animes. Whatever, let's just cook this thing. You heat up a nonstick pan and pour the egg mixture into it, the consistency looking far from ideal. What did he want in it again? He only mentioned spices, right? Whatever, regular salt and pep never hurt anyone. You sprinkle some grated Wait, that's not salt and- oh, okay. You sprinkled some grated cheese and chopped vegetables onto the layer of egg whites, topping it all off with salt and pepper. As you attempt to fold it, it tears easily. You manage to patch it up as best as you can, but it's clear that this is not the interest where the egg white omelette you had envisioned. As you plate the omelette and hand it to Chris, you can't help but feel a mix of disappointment and embarrassment. Hopefully it tastes better than it looks. Oh my god, look at him, he's so... <laughs> Chris, unaware of the small war you had with this man's... Oddly specific recipe, makes his way over to present it to the customer. Oh no, he's just gonna be my shield. I'm so sorry, Chris. What happened here? Chris tries to speak, but he cuts him off. No, actually, I know what happened. Your chef is terrible. Just look at this omelette. It's obvious they can't separate the yolks from the whites. It is most definitely whisked, not to mention that it's clear to anyone's eyes that it's under-seasoned. <laughs> I'm deeply sorry, sir. It's actually their first day. Before Chris could even finish the sentence, the man puts a hand up and stands up from his seat. His figure towered over Chris, looming over him. Did you even try to get my order right? I bet you wrote it down wrong, because there is no way a chef could mess such a simple order up. <laughs> no. I, what? I could sue you for this. Do you even know who I am? Alright, Karen, calm down. <laughs> Shit, this could get messy. You swiftly exit the kitchen and rush over next to Chris, hoping to defuse the situation. You immediately take the blame and offer to make another. Defend him! Yeah, we're not sucking up to this guy. Hey! Both Chris and the man at the table snap their heads towards you. Chris is panicking, obviously not sure what to do in a situation like this. You try to remain calm and to approach the situation with professionalism, but you just can't stand seeing someone being a bully like that. If there's an issue with your meal, you can take it up with me. This has nothing to do with you. I'm the one who made the meal, and it has everything to do with me. The man took a breath, his anger intensifying. You could hear the mutterings of the previous customers nearby, undoubtedly noticing the scene he was causing. How do you mess up this badly? Is this your first day cooking or something? Well, it's my first day on the job and cooking an unnecessarily complicated dish, that's for sure. 
tuts and turns to face you instead of Chris, who takes the chance to take a few steps backwards. What? I'm sorry, this is your first day? And you have the nerve to stand up to me? The hell is this nut job going on about? Who even is he? Look, I get that the food isn't to your standards, and I apologize. That's on me. But there's absolutely no need to sue the place. We can just give you a refund. How does that sound? He looks taken aback for a second before nodding slowly, never widening grin, growing on his smug face. Oh. Oh, I get it now. You finally realized who I am and want to look good. The man crosses his arms over his chest, still fuming with anger. No, I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. Maybe he, maybe he looked familiar? You tried long and hard to think back to all your time spent online or watching TV, but he doesn't look like some A-list celebrity. He just looks like some rich snob. He pulls out a business card and slips it into the pocket of your apron. I'll accept the refund. Honestly, consider yourself lucky I'm not suing this establishment, if you can call it that. Ugh. <laughs> he rolls his eyes and storms off, nudging you on his way out. Take the small card out and scan it for information on the jerk. Wyatt Quinn Q, CEO of YQR YQRO Soft, YQRO, YQRO Soft. Now it made sense. His eyes. Not only is he a genius, but he's extremely popular due to his pretty eyes. <laughs> no, we can't call his eyes pretty. He's an asshole. He's a hit in the modeling scene. You recall a couple of your friends fangirling over him, actually. But he's a dick. Uh, hey, Calico. Chris's gentle voice takes you out of your thoughts and you turn to look at him. Are you okay? I'm sorry about all that. We don't usually have customers like him. He looks down to the floor and plays with his sleeves awkwardly. You playfully flex your arm, making him smile a little. Oh, that's very Calico core. Well, besides that, your first shift is officially over. Here's your pay. Wow, immediate pay on the first day of work? Man, I wish that was the way that things work. <laughs> I would love instant gratification. He hands you a wad of cash from out of his pocket, his sad demeanor seemingly disappearing into thin air. Don't spend it all at once. Can't promise you that, Noni. Ah, thank you. Are you headed off too as well? Chris gives you a strained chuckle and shakes his head. I wish. I've still got the lunch and dinner service to look after. What? It's still morning? Oh my... Wait, weren't we just, like, working all day? How do you still have lunch and dinner? Plus, our other chef doesn't come in until around 7pm. Someone's gotta be here in the meantime. Has he always been working like this? Is it even legal for someone to be working this much? Not wanting to question more of his unhealthy work ethic, you simply nod and go into the locker room to gather your belongings, ready to head off. <laughs> hey. Calico, one sec before you go. My number. You should take it so I can talk to you about shifts or anything. Oh, yeah, we gonna we gonna gossip about the the bad customers? <laughs> oh right. You both exchange contact information and you leave the kitchen, waving goodbye to Chris as you leave. Look down at your phone as you exit, curious about the time. The number... It's 1.30pm? The sky does not say 1.30pm right now. <laughs> Bad customers? You mean customers? Ah, uh, yes. You're, so, you're right. You're right. <laughs> the, the number 1.30pm shone brightly on your screen. Huh. Still pretty early. I thought I was here for longer. Felt like eternity. The longest shift of my life. I guess it wouldn't hurt to just walk around. Following the general direction of other townsfolk, you get to see more of what the town has to offer. Jean wasn't wrong. It really was a beautiful place. You find yourself in the town square. A fresh breeze blows through your hair as you take in your surroundings. The streets were crowded by people and had stalls lining them. Each stall proudly displayed their own unique produce and cuisines, with the most notable being fish. As you walk past the stalls to observe them one by one, you catch sight of a familiar figure. Past his figure, you could see a shorter, silver-haired man who seemed to be talking with him. The man had his arms crossed, donning a tired look on his face. He isn't the kind of guy you would expect him to hang around. But then again, you don't necessarily know him well enough to be making that kind of assumption. Might as well go say hi! Grinning to yourself, you approach the duo and reach out to tap him on the shoulder. Jean, toward, 
Jean turns towards you, his face lighting up as he realizes it's you. Calico, didn't expect to see you here. Have you been settling in well? Well, now that I realize that this music is like always related to him, very like Western, because he's the sheriff. <laughs> Western. <laughs> I wonder if he has an accent. I mean, we know what he sounds like, but. <laughs> yep, I'm actually exploring a little right now. I even managed to get a job at Campo Jomama. Campo Jomama? I love that place. Great coffee to start the day with. I'll definitely be seeing you around a lot more. His eyes disappear from grinning widely at you. Your eyes briefly flutter to the silver haired man. Upon noticing your gaze, the man sharply turns away. Jean takes notice of your curiosity and takes a small step back, placing his hand on the stranger's lower back to lightly push him closer to you. <laughs> it's 1.30 in Alaska, yeah, with the way that the sun is right now. He looked at Jean with his eyes widened, startled by the sudden contact. Jean placed his arm around the stranger's shoulders, tightening his grip slightly as he spoke. This here is good old Vince Matador. Don't mind his behavior, he isn't used to new people. As his eyes narrowed as he gave Jean a curt glare before taking a glance at you. It was short-lived as he chose to give his attention to the ground beneath him instead. <laughs> Why wouldn't- oh, introduce ourselves. It's nice to meet you, Vince. I'm Calico. Vince says nothing in response, seemingly unwilling to introduce himself to you. Instead, he keeps his eyes downward with the occasional glance at Jean. Jean sighs deeply. Come on, Vince. We talked about this. Vince bites the bottom of his lip before looking up at you. Uh... Hey, Jean told me about you. Quite the predicament you've gotten yourself into. With the car and all. His voice is pretty quiet, sort of like Chris when he's nervous. Vince leans more to the mumbling side. Yeah, it's pretty unfortunate. But that's not to say good things haven't come from it. It's still a vacation, I guess. Minus my new job, of course. What about going home? What happened to going home? Vince's attention wasn't on you at the time you had finished your sentence and was fixated on the ground once again. Jean gently nudged Vince, shoulding his attention back to you and the discussion at hand. After some short hesitation, Vince spoke back up. Well, that's an optimistic way to look at it. I'm glad you're not too bummed out about it. Vince's, a Vince's attention shifts back to Jean, who offers a nod of agreement. Mm -hmm. Silence fills the air for a moment before Jean clears his throat. Say, why don't you show Calico around, Vince? It's about time I headed back anyway. Gotta get dinner started. Vince gives Jean a solemn look, his eyes practically begging for him to not leave. <clears throat> Jean, on the other hand, gave Vince a few gentle pats on the arm and a reassuring grin. Alright, I'll leave you two to it then. See you around, Calico. Bye, Jean! You wave goodbye as he turns his back to leave. Vince's face scrunches up as he yells out to Jean. You're a little taken aback as he has been pretty quiet up until now. Hold on now. I never said I would. Jean, get back here! Jean ignores his pleas as he takes a final look back to wave goodbye before disappearing into the crowd of people. <laughs> Jean said, goodbye, peace out. Vince's shoulders drop in defeat. He heaves a big sigh, turning his attention to you. I, uh... I... Uh... <clears throat> I guess... I could try to show you around, unless you've already got plans. He looks down to his thumbs, which he had been twiddling awkwardly for the past few minutes. He doesn't look entirely convinced to walk you around. Uh, refuse to offer for his sake. Refuse to offer for your sake. Agree to walk with Vince. Reluctantly agree to walk with Vince. Ah. Uh... We should get to know each other a little better. Yeah, don't- no, don't refuse the otter. Why would you refuse this face? You don't want to hang out with me? Yeah, sure, why not? I don't have much else to do but sleep anyway. This is a better use of my time. Vince seems almost disappointed when you say yes, his shoulders dropping as he exhales. And he- ask me? What's with the attitude? Let's get on with it then. 
Vince's words sound so half-hearted, you begin to wonder if this was the right decision as the both of you begin walking. It's hard for you at first to get used to the uncomfortable silence between you and Vince, but you eventually don't mind. You've done more than enough talking today with the whole Wyatt situation, so the silence was more than welcome. Vince keeps his eyes glued to the ground, his hands fidgeting with the various bracelets on his arm. So... Your voice trails off and you clear your throat nervously. <coughs> struggling to find the right words. Stay silent, or thank him for taking the time out of his day to show you around. Hey, Vince? You speak gently, trying once again to break the ice. I really appreciate you for taking time out of your day to show me around. I know it must suck to be forced to hang out with a stranger, but it is really nice of you. Appreciate it. Vince's shoulders visibly relax as your words seem to have a positive effect on him. The, yes, the Calico Pascal effect. He looks at you and gives you a half smile. No, no, it doesn't suck. I just don't really get out much. I'm not even sure what to show you, really. Just show me your favorite places. Maybe it'll help me get to know you a bit. Yeah. He leads you to places like his favorite record store and a cozy coffee shop, his genuine enthusiasm evident as he talks about them. As the two of you make your way around a familiar corner, your attention is drawn to Andrew's bookstore. Though, oh, through the windows, you catch a glimpse of him reorganizing books and engrossed in conversation with a few customers. And his eyes naturally follow your gaze and his steps come to an immediate halt. Uh. Let's go to another part of town. You turn to him and notice his eyes fixed on Andrew, though his expression isn't a pleasant one. Oh, juice? You got some juice? I want to know. What's wrong? I really prefer to not talk about it. He shifts his gaze downwards. He raises a hand to the back of his neck, absentmindedly scratching it to physical dispel... Uh, uh, absentmindedly scratching it to physically dispel his unease. <laughs> no, let's not be... We can be nosy, but not that nosy. We just met today. <laughs> Drop it and go elsewhere. Acknowledging his apprehensiveness, you offer a reassuring nod. Probably shouldn't be prying. I can always ask him about it again when I know him better. Exactly. Sure, let's go somewhere else. I haven't been around there yet. You motion toward the opposite direction and offer him a gentle smile. His demeanor softens, a flicker of relief crossing his face as the hint of a smile tugs at the corner of his lips. As the both of you turn a corner, you suddenly hear the distant sound of music and applause. With your newfound curiosity getting the best of you, you follow the source and find yourself at a makeshift stage set up by what seems to be the town's local theater group. Approaching closer to the stage, the crowd's enthusiasm starts to excite you, too. Ooh. Taking a glance at all the performers, it was hard not to be drawn to the guy with the bright green hair. Wow! You don't see that every day. Guess he really wanted to stand out, huh? Ugh. He turned to Vince, who has his arms crossed and brows furrowed. What's wrong? I'm just not a big fan of crowds. Or him. You focus your attention back towards the stage where the green-haired man was giving his final monologue. He happens to be one of the lead actors, his energy and charisma undeniable, his presence radiating through the crowd, mesmerizing everyone with each spoken word. Him? If by him you mean the walking highlighter, then yes, him. <laughs> it's damn Cal Calico calling this guy a pick me. <laughs> He snort a little at the comment, caught off guard by Vince's unexpected sense of humor. I mean, out of this small town, you would surely stand out like this. <clears throat> As the performance reaches its conclusion, the crowd ruptures into cheers. Your attention gets pulled back to the lead performer, though his eyes were already on you, his gaze direct and sparkling with intrigue. As the crowd slowly disperses, he boldly jumps off the stage and approaches you with a wide grin. Man, we're being targeted. You hear a small groan of protest come from Vince as he rolls his eyes. Hey there! You new in town? The name's Kevin. What's up, Kevin? Do people in this town just know everyone? This is like the millionth time I've been asked this. Uh, yes actually. I'm Calico. How could you tell I was new? He snorts sheepishly. I'm a regular performer here. Practically every week. I've seen the same faces countless times. But yours... Yours is definitely new. I see. 
<laughs> he gives you a playful smirk, his eyes holding a glint of amusement. <clears throat> Before you could reply, the man's gaze falls on Vince and his eyebrows rise as if he just realized he was there. The smirk only strengthened. Oh, the vampire finally left his house? Whoa, hold up. <laughs> Proud of you, Bray. I really thought some sunlight would make you dissolve or something. Vince only musters up an annoyed glare. Satisfied with his tease, the performer returns his attention to you. Anyways, how are you finding Brian Bay? I'm sure it's not much, but it's got a few redeemable charms. I don't really know yet. I've literally been here one day. It's been nothing special. I like it so far. I'm not sure yet. To be honest, I don't really know yet. There's been so many new experiences, I haven't really had the time to process it at all. Yeah, like I said, we only just got here yesterday. New experiences. His head tilts to the side. Well, yeah, having my car break down randomly is definitely a first to me. Plus, I'm more used to the city. His eyes widen with surprise and he excitedly grabs your hands. City? You're from the city? That's so cool! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Only for college. I grew up in a pretty small town. Similar to this one, actually. You chuckle awkwardly at the sudden contact and he quickly lets go. He clears his throat as his cheeks flush a light red. Um... Sorry, I, well, I just always wanted to go to the city. He let out a soft, amused laugh. No worries, I understand. Well, so, uh... What do you think about my performance? Is it anything like the actors from Paragon Arts? Paragon Arts. Probably the most prominent theater company you could think of. It comes as no surprise that he aspires to be like them. Rudely say no or praise him. Oh no, let's... He can't crush his dreams. We just met the guy. Oh, definitely. I personally think you're better than those carbon copies I've seen. Did you see how riled up that audience was when you finished your scene? I've never seen anyone do that. You've got something special. Excited, he grins and lifts his chin triumphantly. <laughs> Your response makes Vince roll his eyes and turn to look elsewhere, now uninterested in the conversation. Thanks! Haha, <laughs> you did say that. I hear it from the others all the time, but it's refreshing to hear it from someone new. I mean, come on, look at me! He puffs his chest out and does a small flex with his arm. I've got the charm, the talent, and the extra it factor. I really think I can get far. Just... not here. He chuckles lightly, his bravado momentarily fading as he relaxes his posture. Not here. He seems well established, though. It's a small town, you know? Can't get my name out there if it's unknown. Right. Right. But hey, I'm getting closer each day. Me too, bro. I feel you. Maybe someday you can even call yourself one of my fir one of my very first fans. He gives you a quick wink. A voice suddenly calls to him from the stage where people have started to clean. Ah, crap. I've got a bounce, but he begins rummaging through his bag, pulling out a small business card that looks similar to Wyatt's. Feel free to reach out if you ever need a friend or want to catch another show. Okay. He begins to make his way back to the stage before turning his head to you to raise a hand to wave goodbye. I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. And with that, he disappears into the crowd. You look up at the sky and notice that it's turning, it's starting to get dark. Clearly, you've stayed out longer than you would have liked to. It's getting pretty late. We should get going. Vince nods and follows behind your lead. Wait, why, why am I leading now? <laughs> While walking home, you glance down at the small makeshift card in your hand. Kevin Zunio. Recalling Wyatt's card, you retrieve it from your pocket and compare the two. Yep, exactly the same. Isn't this kind of plagiarism? Shrugging off the thought, you tuck the two cards away. So, what was that all about? What, me and Kevin? Don't worry about it, it's kind of dumb. He waves his hand up dismissively as he mumbles under his breath to downplay the situation. If you say so. It was nice seeing you be less gloomy, though. You give him a small nudge and smile as he dips his head to hide the flush on his cheeks. The both of you finally reach the hostel after a long walk back to the opposite side of town. You're just about spent on energy and we're in need of a good rest. Well, I guess that's it for today. Yep, thanks for walking me back, Vince. It's no problem. As you're about to turn, he gently reaches out, his fingers brush against yours. <gasps> oh my god. 
Your eyes flicker for a brief moment down to your hands before making eye contact with him. Uh, um... Thanks for today, Calco. I know I'm not the easiest of people to get along with, but you kept trying anyway. Not a lot of people would, so thank you for that. I had a good time. Me too. Me too, Vince. It's been nice. It's been nice to meet you. Would you? Uh, his voice trails off, cracking a little at the end. Would you maybe like to have? He roots his gaze and begins to nervously chew on his lip again. Um, unless you think that's stupid, which it kind of is. Why would you want my number? We just met. That's weird. Because we're friends! He chuckled at his nervousness and nod. Sure, Vince. His expression relaxes slightly, a hint of relief tugging at the corner of his lips. He takes out his phone and quickly shares his number with you. It's a small gesture, but you can tell it means more to him than he's letting on. Well, I'll head off now. Jean would probably start freaking out if I'm not back before nighttime. Right. Jean did mention he was making dinner for them. Good night, Calico. Good night, Vince. I smile at him as he walks off, glad he was able to come out of his shell by the end of the day. Upon entering your room, you waste no time shutting your clothes off by the entrance. A trail gets left behind you as you rush into the bathroom for a well-deserved shower. You do your usual night routine and get into your comfiest set of pajamas. As you leave the bathroom, you gather your discarded clothing to clean when you get the chance. Hopefully there's a dry cleaner nearby. Uh-oh. You can't be stinky! You hop into the bed and wrap yourself up with the large blue comforter. Turning to your side, you grab your phone and begin scrolling through your list of new contacts. I wonder if anyone's free to talk right now. <gasps> Ooh, we can pick someone to talk to? <gasps> Mom and Dad. Why can't we call mom and dad? Aren't they worried that we haven't made it back home yet? Oh no. Hmm. I... Out of everyone we talked to... Wait, we don't have... We don't have Andrew's number. The guy from the library. We never exchanged numbers. No. Let's talk. To Chris. Chris, my work buddy, who is now also my friend. Oh my god, we're calling him. We're not just we're not just texting, we're calling him. Hi! It's so good to hear from you. Oh my I god. I actually just got home. A longer shift than usual today. But enough about me. How are you? Are you feeling better about the situation with Wyatt earlier? Uh, I'm doing fine. Did you say you just got home? Isn't it super late? Or I'm struggling to sleep, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Oops. The funny thing is, I still gotta cook for my sisters after I take a quick shower. Ah, <sighs> times like these, I wish I did a little bit more exercise in high school, cause I am spent. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> well, I should get to it then. Thanks for calling. I don't think I've had anyone just call and talk to me in ages. Who calls these days? <laughs> Who aren't my sisters, of course. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Chris. Why he works so hard? No. Stop. As the two of you exchange your parting words, you press the end call button. Well, this is this wasn't exactly what I thought my holiday would be like. But I'm glad everyone I've met has been nice so far. Feeling content, you plug your phone into the charger and gently shut your eyes, ready to doze off to sleep. I wonder how tomorrow will go. Wow! We reached the end of the demo! Thank you for playing the demo for Threads of You Beyond the Bay. We're grateful that you've given our game a chance and hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you'll consider supporting us on our social media accounts and join our Discord server for future updates and sneak peeks of our story and content going forward. Have a good day! Yeah, so, uh, I'm sure it's the same everywhere else, but this, again, is Threads of You Beyond the Bay by Lavender Studios. And this demo just came out yesterday, so it's brand new um, for anyone who's watching. I hope you had a good experience playing it with me 
Um, and hopefully you'll check it out yourself in case I missed anything. Yeah, oh my god. We've met so many boys. Oh my gosh. Wow. We've done it. That was Threads of You Beyond the Bay, again by Lavendier Studios. Oh, look. Oh, that was fun. I I really appreciate all the the choices and stuff. I think that's always a nice touch. Very immersive and feels customizable from like both the uh, protagonist's perspective and also just as a player. And then being able to to call them and like have have them talk to you on the phone. That's a really cute touch too. Very cute. I'm looking forward to the full game coming out. <laughs> yeah, we just ate our fill for breakfast. Uh, I think if I had to give any sort of feedback, unless I'm uh, blind and I didn't see it, I think there could have been some indication of like a scroll wheel to, to see more of the choices. Uh, but then again, that's also coming from me who at the beginning of the like make your character screen didn't realize you could turn the pages of the the book for the character customization to see that there were more options for each thing on both the left and the right sides i didn't even like it took me a moment to realize you can change the color of things because they were just like these little tabs on the side of the book but i digress i still think a lot of the uh, user interface choices are very cute. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that was all I had planned for today, so I know it's a bit shorter of a stream than normal, but we're actually just on time because in about, uh, looks like 15 minutes, um, Big Ham, who you, some of you might know of, Big Ham will be streaming with Omona, who is an artist who does a lot of, um, merch at conventions and such. They have their own store and a lot of very cute goods. They do a lot of collabs with people as well. Well, Omona is going to be teaching Big Ham how to use uh, Animate, or also known as uh, Flash. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Big Ham. Yes, I'm a big fan too. Big Ham! We love Big Ham and Omona in this house. They are Float Harbor Aquarium friends, for sure. Always welcome here. Um, but, yeah, let me... Or I think I actually just know it. So let me pull up. Where are you guys? I'm gonna send you over. Well, I can't... I can't... Obviously, we can't cross over... Um, I can't cross over raid people. Uh, but... I'm going to put in... Big Ham's channel link for Twitch, because I think that's where they are streaming. So I think this is it. Please go to their channel. They will be live in 15 minutes. Make sure you say hello at you. I mean, you don't have to. I'm not gonna make you do anything. <laughs> but if you want, you can tell them that Calico says hi. I will try to join and be there myself for a little bit to say hey. So if I see any of you guys in there, please say hi to me. But also don't distract from whatever they end up doing. Oh, thank you for coming. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, doing this little demo with me. I really enjoy uh, doing these demos live on stream because they're like a perfect short stream length. It's very content and um, yeah, just like a nice good chunk introductory for anybody who might be interested for the full game whenever it releases. So if you did like this Threads of You Beyond the Bay playthrough, you got a little taste for yourself, be sure to follow Lavender Studios on their social media or their Discord. Um, and then also wishlist Threads of You Beyond the Bay on Steam, so you can get updated whenever the game does come out. But yeah, I have nothing else to say. For, um, next week will be 
the last visual novel playthrough for this month, I believe. Yeah. Next, yeah, that's right. Next Thursday is the last day of February. And I have a special game that I have in mind to play, a special visual novel. So I hope you'll all be looking forward to it. As usual, I will post uh, waiting room stuff whenever um, I have things ready. It should be a few days before the this the day of stream on that week of. So just keep an eye out. And of course, the waiting room will show up if you're subscribed to me here on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe and also follow me on uh, Twitter. And uh, I really should start updating my Instagram, but I have an Instagram too. And with that, I will see you guys all next week, same time, 7 p.m. here. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Let's see. We gotta go to the ending screen. Meow. Bye-bye. See ya.